ओम भूर्भुव सहत सवितुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो दीवसमी दियो यो न प्रचोदया तो शांति 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 नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड दिस इज वीडियो नंबर थ्री ऑन सत्य बायाबाज डिवाइन मैसेज टू द मैन काइंड थ्रू हिज डिवाइन डिस्कोर्सेस द टॉपिक इज अर्न गॉड्स लव फ्रॉम द सत हैज एमर्ज ऑल देर इज द सत परमिट्स द होल ऑफ क्रिएशन नथिंग एग्जिस्ट विदाउट द पावर ऑफ सत वी होल्ड द ग्लोरी ऑफ दिस एटरनल सत है tossed about on the bitter ocean of mundane existence going hither and hither without a rudder or a compass if only you steady your mind for a moment the lord of sri will send you o man his rescue boat the love of god is the foremost reward to be attained in human life it is more pre- precious than all the wealth in the world all wealth and position are obtained by the love and grace of the divine the value of bhagavata prema the love of god can be realized only if the meaning of the term bhagwan is rightly understood Brahma, Brahma, Shabda are among the terms used as appellations of Bhagwan. The term Bhagwan is the sweetest of all them. The true meaning of Bhagwan, Bhaga means the one who is a repository of all divine attributes and is uniquely worthy of adoration. ga refer to one who has all the excellence and who creates sustains and reabsorbs everything the letter bha has two meanings sambharta and bharta sambharta means one who is competent to make nature the instrument of the creative process because he is also competent to sustain what is created he is called bharta bha has other meanings as shanti peace light effulgence illumination ga means all pervasive one or one to do in telugu means one who is capable hence the term bhagwan means the one who is capable of lighting the divine effulgence the illumination of wisdom the eternal inner light of the soul can there be anything greater than warning the love of such an omniscient omnipotent lord there is nothing on earth or beyond it which is equal to the divine love to make all and words to earn that love is the whole purpose and meaning of the human existence to lead a happy life man needs peace of mind the mind is like that turbulent ganga it has to be restrained by the use of brakes as in a fast moving vehicle dhyana meditation is the brake device for the control of the mind dhyana means one pointed concentration all the diseases which afflict men are the result of agitation in the mind the enormous growth of disease in the world today is due to the loss of peace of mind to get rid of illness and to lead a calm healthy life man has to cultivate mental peace man's mind has three kinds of capabilities one is aneka graha aneka garta a wandering mind another is sunyatha vacancy emptiness the third is ekagrata single pointed concentration what is sunyatha it is the state in which the mind goes to sleep with something edifying is being said the mind is unresponsive to what is good and beneficial 
such a state of mind is called tamasic it is the blindness of ignorance anekagarta the wandering mind is an equally undesirable mental state it is also degrades it also degrades man everyone needs one pointed concentration then there is one pointed concentration of mind this is what everyone needs most today to dwell powers of concentration sports and games are very essential they serve to promote physical fitness and mental health games and sports are to be practiced mainly for keeping the body in good trim unfortunately today the spirit of commercialism is rampant even in the fields of sports and entertainment when the idea of making money is predominant concern for health recedes to the background sports and the fine arts have become commercial arts and are not practiced for the sake of health or enjoyment art has come from heart but today the heart has been divorced from the arts the spiritual basis of the latter has been ignored what the students need today are two things the spirit of sacrifice devotion to god love of the motherland because people are filled with pride selfishness and self interest they are ceasing to be human it is supremely important that the qualities of devotion to god patriotism and self sacrifice should be developed among the people for this the first requisite is the elimination of my and mine the readiness to sacrifice one's pleasures and comforts for the sake of the nation should be promoted among the students when there are many high minded spiritually oriented students the nation will achieve peace and security be prepared to make any sacrifice for god education should be for acquiring knowledge and for facing the challenges of life not merely for getting a job students should not become survival seekers of post in government they should have faith in god and bow their heads only to the divine they must be prepared always to make any sacrifice for god and country demonic forces have have gained strength because the people have lost their faith in the power of god and dharma righteousness students should develop self reliance and self confidence they have to adhere to basic qualities such as truth righteousness forbearance and self sacrifice which are common to all people without regard to nationality creed or language they must cultivate a broad outlook based on the fact that the divine is present in everyone there is nothing which they cannot accomplish if they have faith in god and earn god's grace <laughs> discourse at the institute auditorium purity of mind alone can confer upon it tranquility the upanishads have proclaimed in full throated wise that sacrifice alone leads to immortality sacrifice is the chief trait of the pure therefore every student must imbibe and display the spirit of sacrifice in life the five d's the universe itself is a university in which every human being is a student every student pursues one subject and acquires a degree each one chooses a subject he likes but whatever different subjects they may study there is one thing common to all of them one common pursuit and goal to obtain the degree of divine love in the cosmic universe though there are scientific political economic and other studies what is fundamental to all of them is the spiritual knowledge 
even in the spiritual field then are there are special subjects these are one group which may be described as the five d's that is dedication devotion discipline discrimination and determination those who have mastered the five d's are qualified to receive law god's law dedication should be free from ego and envy dedication must dedication means offering as soon as swami arrived teachers and students made offerings of flowers and offered their salutation the flower symbolizes the heart when you offer the flower of your heart to the lord it should be free from the pest of desire hatred and why greed and the like only flowers are offered to the lord or those whom you revere the flower of the heart is subject to infestation by two evil creatures one is ahankara self conceit and the other is asuya and why self conceit is based on eight different factors wealth physical powers birth scholarship beauty power penance of these the arrogance born of wealth is to be despised most as long as this ahankara self conceit is predominant it is impossible to recognize the divine or one's spiritual reality self conceit is a great barrier between the individual and god it has to be utterly demolished pride of wealth is another human failing which causes the downfall of man all forms of pride based on birth wealth power or scholarship have to be given up totally only when egoistic pride is offered as a sacrifice at the altar of the divine can man discover his true nature this is the dedication that is called for as the first step in the spiritual journey next comes the devotion this is the highest form of love service to hari kesa is known as bhakti says the sutra devotion means constant contemplation of god the term bhakti is derived from the root bhakt to worship devotion means loving contemplation of god repetition of his name worshiping him and doing penance for him service to the lord is the highest expression of devotion there is nothing which is not attainable through loving service to the divine devotion does not mean merely doing bhajans or performing puja these forms of devotion at present are based on some kind of self interest and self seeking true devotion should be free from selfishness of any kind devotion is not something to be proclaimed or demonstrated exhibitionistic devotion may result in disaster true devotion should be an expression of love both internally and externally discipline should be strictly followed in daily life next comes the discipline this is most essential for students from the moment you wake up you have to carry out your morning ablutions meditate on god and then do your prescribed duties in an orderly manner without deviating from the regular routine variations in the routine from day to day are undesirable you should not wake up at one hour on one day and at a different time on another day the day's activities should be regulated by the same schedule immediately after finishing the morning course one should devote in the calm and serene atmosphere of the morning at least for a few minutes to loving meditation on god the human state is based upon regulation and self control these have to be strictly adhered to in daily life then comes the discrimination the world 
it is a mixture of good and bad, of joy and sorrow, right and wrong, victory and defeat. In a world replete with such opposites, man has to make constantly the choice between what is right and proper and what is wrong and undesirable. Man should not let himself be guided by the mind. He should follow the direction of the buddhi intelligence. As long as you follow the mind, you cannot obtain Madhava, divinity. Students must learn to use discrimination. Young people in their tender years tend to follow the inclinations of the mind. They do not rise to the level of their intelligence. Consequently, they are subject to various agitations and frustrations. They have therefore to learn to use their powers of discrimination. I am a human being in this condition. How should I conduct myself so that I may win the respect and regard of others? These are the questions which each student must ask himself. He should inquire on every occasion as to what is the right course and what is to be avoided. He should decide on what he should do and where he should go after due inquiry. Having acquired knowledge, he should not behave like an illiterate, uneducated person. His conduct should be in keeping with his learning. Humility is the index of true education. Without humility, scholarship will lack luster. Discrimination is essential for every student and educated man. Discrimination is the fifth day. It is like the range of a horse. When you want to achieve something, you must have the determination and persistence to secure it by all your efforts. No room should be given for doubts and hesitations. There is nothing on earth which cannot be achieved with firm determination. Starting with dedication, you and with determination, there is no use relying solely on book knowledge or mere intellectual cleverness. There must be firm faith in God as the basis of everything. There is one kind of pest which affects the leaves and branches of a tree. There is another which destroys the root of a tree. Likewise, the hypocrite a hypocrite is human pest which can spoil a good man. The hypocrite is merely an actor. He poses as a devotee externally but is really evil-minded. He leads a double life. It is dangerous to associate it with such persons. Many good men in the world have come to grief because of the association with such pretenders, worldly and divine love. Love is of two kinds, one related to the physical and the other related to the divine. All the fears and delusions afflicting the world, all the chaos and violence prevalent today are due primarily to physical attachments. These are also responsible for falsehood, corruption and other evil rampant in society. Divine love knows no differences among individuals and nations. Egoistic attachment and self in selfishness are at the root of all human troubles and conflicts. Physical love should be confined to strict limits. If the divine consciousness were not present within of what use would the body be? It would be as useless as a school without teachers, a farm without water, a temple without deity. You must develop divine love. You must be resolute in striving to achieve what you aim at. Only then will your devotion and discipline bear fruit. There is no meaning in parading one's devotion. The external human form has no significance. You must be human in your actions and feelings by reforming your conduct and purifying your thoughts and actions. Sanctify your lives. That alone is true education which will lead to self-realization. <coughs> 
man is divine take it from me he is really here on a holy mission for a divine purpose to consider him as means or weak or sinful is a great mistake this is this itself is a great sin man must earn his birthright namely shanti ashanti is for him an unnatural state his real nature is shanti to recover his heritage heritage of shanti man tries various methods accumulation of riches maintenance of health the mastery of knowledge and cultivation of the arts though these are not fundamental three basic ones still remain after all these methods have been tried the need for reality for light and for immortality beyond degrees god's love students your real form is not made up of body the sense organs the mind and the intellect satyachit ananda the atma who is the indwelling witness in you is your real form instead of realizing this truth truth people are wasting their lives by identifying themselves with this body the universe is a great university by pursuing a variety of studies literary scientific political economic and other studies knowledge is acquired but not peace of mind succumbing to the insatiable desire people are losing peace and leading meaningless lives it is essential to practice spiritual discipline among along with academic studies specialization in studies does not help the student to get an integral view of life and its problems education should serve to the serve to develop a broad outlook and an all-round view of life it is not enough to acquire degrees you must learn to acquire god's grace the means of getting the divine grace are bhakti devotion prapatti surrender niyama ethical disciplines vicharana enquiry and diksha determination when you succeed in these tests you will experience the grace of the divine every offering to god is devotion devotion should manifest itself in every action everything done out of love for god and as a offering to god becomes a devotion the devotee is filled with love and shares the love with all the others the nine different forms of worship are only means to cultivate a devotion but the goal of all them is to experience oneness with the divine prapatti means a total surrender offering everything to the divine the sense of ego separates the individual from the divine when the individual offers everything to god this ego barrier is removed of all diseases to which man is prone the disease arising from ahankara ego is the most deadly the only panacea for this disease is surrender to the will of the divine education should be utilized for developing the power of discrimination between right and wrong good and evil without discrimination a human being is worse than an any well you need a determination to face the challenges of life which is filled with ups and downs successes and failures joys and sorrows these challenges have to be faced with faith in god the mind should not be allowed to waver and hope from one thing to the other is a steady mind is the mark of a truly educated person life should be governed by definite regulations self control is essential for leading a righteous life do not get disheartened by failure bharat's culture has always laid stress on the well-being of all lokah samastah sukhino bhavantu let all the worlds of happy you should not be overwhelmed by difficulties that you may re and counter in life they are all transient and they come and go the source of enduring bliss is within you do not give way to weakness of will 
the Upanishad declares na ayam atma bala sine na lok bhayam. The spirit is not realized by a weak link. Most students are apt to get disheartened when they fail to obtain high marks in an examination. They should, on the contrary, regard it as a challenge to do better in future. Students must develop courage, self-confidence and determination so that they can face any situation in life. This is the reason for combining spiritual discipline with academic studies. After you complete your studies, you must become ideal mothers. The mother is the most dis decisive factor in a child's life. A child's future is molded by the mother. You have an obligation to please your parents who are responsible for all that you are. Give joy and satisfaction to them. Thereby you will be ensuring joy and satisfaction for yourself from your children in the years to come. Have high aims in life set before yourselves the examples of great men and women who have figured in the history of our country and the world take a lesson from their life of sacrifice and heroism wherever you go whether you whether walk of life you may choose bear in mind the honor and glory of the Satya Sai Institute and prove yourselves in action to be worthy alumni of institute. Conduct yours, yourselves benefitingly before elders and relations and earn their regard and love. Bring credit to the family in which you are born and the family in which your married life may be spent. Discourse to the students of the Sri Satya Sai College for Women Anand. 21 January 1988. So I end this video here. Next video will be on discourse 7th ascent to the divine. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment and share the video and subscribe the channel. Thanks a lot. Namaskar my dear friends.